di quella pira l'orrendo fuoco tutte le fibre marcello un po' e più spendi la hey everybody and welcome back to eat my pasta where we take here at sapori ravioli i've got dominic here chef boy oh boy if you ask me and dominic Today we're doing meatballs or? No, today we're doing, we're going to feature eggplant and uh -huh. this, my mother always makes this for the longest time and my kids love it. And uh, so I think, you know, let me make it. It's not my recipe, it's my mother and my grandmother. So, but I've been eating it all of my life and it's really not that hard and they're really good. And if people don't want to, you know, meat or whatever, this is a, a great vegetarian meatball great. that we use it. And, you know, you could, as we go along, you know, we could you could use uh, shred some zucchini in there to enhance it. You know, if you want to, you could do a lot of things you could do to really make it a uh, veggie uh, meatball. But this is a eggplant meatball. So we start out with a nice eggplant, and you could get a different size. And so that's why some of the ingredients that, as we go along, you're going to see that we're going to marry. Do you prefer that eggplant, not the not the Japanese eggplant, not the Sicilian eggplant? No, I just eggplant. I, actually I like to get the, the female one, the male ones, is so they have less seeds. But if they do have more seeds, I'm sure you're going to take it off. And then you just naturally you peel it. If you don't, you know, if, I don't like to leave the, the skin on it because it's hard to chop because you have to chop all the. the and the it's egg a little bitter sometimes. Yeah, and you, you don't want to, it's hard to chop and then it goes in your teeth and whatever you, so I'm going to peel it. And then what we'll do is just, uh, I don't even salt it, but if you want to put a little salt, because I do everything at the season. Because then we cut them in half and we just bake them 350, about 15, 20 minutes. It depends on the side, you want them nice and soft. If you have a little... They're gonna be pretty much shot when it's Yes, done. I'm gonna show you just yeah. like this. I cook these. Ah. So we clean this up and then we cut this in half. And then you get a lot. So if you get a good deal on eggplants, see, see some of these are more seeds than other. So this you get like two or three. This I got three here and you got a lot of them. So then we just put them in the in the oven. You salt that a little bit and then you put it on the plate, right. put it on the pan? And put them in the pan, you bake them 350, about 15, 20 minutes. It depends on the size too. Do you suggest the parchment paper on the bottom? Yes, if you have parchment paper, it's fine. If not, just to, you know, not that don't leak that much, but if you don't want a clean pan, that's fine. So, so that's at 350 for how long? About 15, 20 minutes. Now, it depends on the size also, because, you know, some big gay plans take a little longer. So, but, you, you check them out every 15, 20 minutes, you really want them really soft. Ah. You know, now, you know, you can't over, if you overcook them, no big deal. So, I chopped two of these here, and as, as you can see here, this is a little cold, better when it's warm. You, I like to take some of the seeds out. You don't want too much seeds in here. So, I, I omit some of the seeds. So like I said, some eggplant, they're more than other, and more seeds than other. So, I just, Take the seeds out, take some of the front out because it's a little hard. And you listen, I'm doing this by hand, but you, you use a, a cuisinart or blender oh, and, and uh, it like works out. Like a food processor? Yeah, it, it works out really nice. I just, for the sake of that, I don't want to make too much noise or whatever. So we just chop it like I did that. This I did in a food process. Yeah, and, it, and it's easy. And I like see some of the seeds. Yeah. You can leave in there. I just don't like too much seeds. And like I said, if you get uh, some eggplant, they're more than other, the male and the female. Believe it or not, they do have male and female. <laughs> so, and then uh, you really want it nice and fine and incorporate it. Like I said, if you're not going to use a food process, it's, it's okay. Just be careful you don't know what emulsify. I do, do want some little chunkies in there. It's when you taste it. Not that watery. My mother makes it really fine. I like a little chunky. You do whatever you like. Just a little salt. Breadcrumbs. What's that, about a half a cup, a cup? Yeah, but uh, this is about a, a cup. And like I said, as you go along, you're just gonna, cheese, you could put it, this is a half a cup of cheese. This is Parmesan or? This is Romano cheese. Romano. And uh, parsley. I, I didn't put no eggs, no nothing, because I don't want it. 
Because the, the eggplant will yeah. bind it. Yes. Right. So it'll, it, it comes out uh, pretty good. You're gonna bind it all together. The breadcrumbs and the cheese are your binder. I don't, I don't want to put no rom no mozzarella or nothing in there. I just wanted to, to keep it simple. Like I said, but if you want to shred some zucchini, please, you could do it. It's not a big deal. See, if you want to put a, an egg yolk, then you could do it also. Now, I won't put the whole egg, but just the egg yolk to bind it. It just tastes for, for seasoning. And you don't want to put too much salt because the Romano's got salt in there. Right. So we make the shape and then we roll it in there. Oh, I see. And, and we that, fry that it. helps to bind it up also. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and it holds it when you fry it. Mm. Sounds like a plant up. We put it in here and we're going to make these and then we're going to fry them up. All right, Dom, so what kind of oil this are you This is canola oil, and we don't have too much. It's nice, it's ready. We're just going to drop them in. There we go, a few at a time. This way we don't drop the, uh, the temperature of the oil down too much. Always it's put very it. important to have the oil hot enough yeah, when you fry them. Yeah, you don't want uh, to fall apart and get all that grease, right, right. absorb all the grease. So see how nice they're getting nice? Yeah. And and they're not falling apart, so. No, beautiful. And wait till you taste it, they're nice and moist. So always when you put it away from you, that you don't get burned. See a nice. Oh, again? yeah. Oh, my. Wow, yeah, that is an attractive looking. Uh, yeah, we use that for the chicken oil. and the eggplant. Yeah, you, you serve them as like a, a side dish? You or? can use them as a side dish, you can use them as a main dish, you, you can do a lot of things with these things. Got a little bit of olive oil here. We're going to warm up some uh, marinara. Now, can you do like a parmesan with that? Uh, you, you could put cheese. Yeah, you, you could. I just. I mean, you could do a lot of things. It's not right and it's not wrong, but it's whatever. Let me have those potatoes. Beautiful. Some olive oil. This is Italian mashed potatoes. Uga, did you put all the salt in there? Uh, let me have a little salt. And this is just potato they are boiled. We're gonna put some salt. No, nothing extra, we're just gonna mash it. And you're gonna have a great, if, for, you know, for us, if you have guests, if you have family. I like, even my mashed potato, we never, I always put olive oil in. So you, no milk, no, no, none of that no, stuff? No, no, none of that. I put, uh, if you want to, you could uh, put a couple of cloves of garlic. Oh, that would be nice. Mm. The marinara is ready. Hey, the old peasant dishes cost a lot of money to make now. Yes. So that's going to cook a little bit. To get the meatballs, put it right here. I want to cut one, so this way. Nice and moist. That. I'm gonna steal that piece right there. Oh my god, that's delicious. Isn't it good? Holy mackerel. That's phenomenal. This is no fun. Edie, where do you taste that? <laughs> and then you have it with the potato. Delicious. And you could have this, you know, if you have, you just make real some chicken or whatever, you, and you make this as a dish. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing right there. Okay, we put this. We got the marinara here. Get some nice parsley and cheese. Then 
the sauce goes on the potatoes. Oh my gosh. It looks wonderful. Put a little here. Little sauce around here. Little sauce around here. You could actually make that a main dish with a uh, well, this, this, on the yeah, side. Yeah, all you need is just some, uh, you know, like I said, some chicken or whatever, and you can have this as a veggie. All right. Some grated cheese. Parsley. Makes it pretty. And we really didn't use a lot of garlic. I, I don't think we used any no, garlic. No, I didn't use just a little of this. And here you go. So, Dominic, now we have a new ravioli. This is new to support. Yes, we just made it. We came up with that idea. Actually, it was my son. It's eggplant dolentini ravioli. And inside is mozzarella, this sauce, this uh, eggplant, and this uh, mozzarella, and the regatta. And the dough. And the dough on our side. So, and the, and we, we put some uh, eggplant extract on the, on the inside, so it's got a nice color. And they're really delicious. And it's easy. You could just put marinara, some pesto, and, and just, you know, you want to chop up some onions uh, and uh, tomatoes, put it on. It's just simple to make. And again, another vegetarian. Yeah. You could put them in there for yeah. five, six minutes. And they cook. And we're just going to put some marinara with pesto. I'm going to make some uh, pesto with marinara. It's got a nice combination. It's got it's, a nice color to it, too. Yeah. They, the they, 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 yeah. And it gives it a little distinguished taste. You're going to love this uh, new ravioli. Give it a try. We're just going to cook it and uh, so people get familiar with it and, and uh, give it a try. So oh, nice, they beautiful they too, right they, yeah, they're beautiful. So we're going to put them right over here. I got some marinara sauce over here. And what I'm going to do with it in the marinara sauce, I got like a quarter cup of pesto sauce, I want to mix it in there. It gives such a unique taste. Especially with, especially with the eggplant and you can smell the basil. Nice color. Oh, it, it goes really nice with the, with the eggplant Valentini ravioli. Oh, that's hot. No, don't use it. Let me get this side. There we go. I forgot to get my air. I'm going to line them up. I put some uh, sauce on here. And this really, it's unique. You try them out, you'll enjoy. If you love eggplant and like eggplant or lentine, you're really going to enjoy this new product that we're featuring now. And the pesto and the marinara, you can't over pesto, you don't no. do too much pesto. No, just a little bit, it just uh, it gives it enough. This is just my preference, but you can use vodka, you can use marinara, you could just saute, like I said, some uh, onion and fresh tomatoes. And oh, that would be good too, yeah. And that, that's it, really. Let me put some some parsley and little Romano for decorated. And there you have a new product, eggplant Valentini ravioli. Try it, you'll enjoy them. So Don, now you got, what are these, baby eggplants? These are called Indian eggplant, or they, I like them, they're kind of small, because you could do a lot of things with it. Uh, as you see before, I just scoop them up, and then we save that. And you just use a spoon, I like to use a bigger spoon and get it all out at once, yeah. There you go. You scoop them up, then I'm going to chop the middle of it. I did some of it, I just want to do some of them for the view. Use a nice big spoon, they come right out. It's a little work, but I thought if you, you make these, they, they're so good and they look great. You know, especially if you have a party, you can use them as an appetizer. Yeah, that oh looks like a great appetizer. Yeah, and it's not, you know, it seems like this you could make up the day before and you just bake them. Yeah. Or even a couple of days prior to that. So now, this here, we're going to chop them real fine, 
and we're going to make it a mix. And now again, can you use a food processor on that? Or you yeah, definitely. I'm just uh, okay. You definitely use a food processor. But I'm so used to chop, we don't have too much. So uh, we'll before the days of the food processor, this is how you did it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> In my uh, my grandmother or my kitchen. It's not that hard. Okay, we're chopping these fine. So now we're gonna make some all in a bowl. I got a bowl over here. And in this bowl we're gonna make, I got a quarter cup of calamata pitted olives. It gives oh. them a, then I got some quarter cup of fresh tomatoes. Little onion, quarter cup of onion, chopped garlic. A lot of people don't like this, but I love anchovies, so I'm going to put a few anchovies in there because I don't need no salt, and I love anchovies, so you yeah, never know. Like you never know that it's in there. Some exactly. parsley. Now, and this is uh, the binder here. This is a quarter cup of chickpeas. I put them in the food processor, little olive oil, and this is going to bind them all together. little black pepper and we're gonna mix it all this together see you could you I don't like I see I didn't, I didn't use no cheese on this no nothing I just like to keep it because they're gonna put a little regatta salad on the top and uh, but you if you want to you could put cheese in there but I like just to keep it simple natural and the the, the chickpeas is a natural binder who would have thought yeah, I love chickpeas. I use this as a binder them all the time. And it's good for you. Healthy. Very healthy. And uh, see, it binds it right up. You, you need a binder, so I don't want to use breadcrumbs. And so chickpeas, for me, it's, I use, like I said, I use it all the time. Oh, my gosh. If people could smell that. So it's... this is done. Oh, you, even the, the, the olives and the anchovies. Yeah. You never know. People say that you never know. So we got a pan over here. Gotta put a little bit of olive oil underneath there. I wanna put a little bit of olive oil on the on the eggplant. This way they become nice and crispy on the inside and the outside. And just just use your hands and just just stuff them. Ah, how beautiful is that? Yeah, we stuffed them, and you, you know, you don't have to overstuff them. I like to overstuff them, just you could go level, and you just push it down underneath. You did great, Dylan. Yeah, it's not my first time in the kitchen. So, here we go. Good. Okay, as uh, you can see, we stuffed them, all of them with a little, with a lot of help. See how nice they look? So, now we're going to shred some, uh, this is regatta salada. Imported from Italy, and we got the salad. It really goes nice on top of. And that's like a creamier cheese. Yeah, it's it's a ricotta that it's dried. Ah. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of on top of it. That's gonna give some melt. We got the salad. It goes great with eggplant or like feta cheese or whatever you so. But this is the, the Italian version of. Uh, yeah, hold that. Put saran wrap on the top, on the top. Don't worry about it. It's not going to burn. It doesn't melt either. It doesn't melt. It's as long as you put aluminum foil over it. <laughs> if you don't put aluminum foil, then you got a problem. <laughs> I'm going to keep it nice and moist. For the last few minutes, I, uh, I'm going to uncover just to make them crispy. So I'm going to put this in there and put them in the oven 400 about 20 minutes. And then we'll take them out and we'll see what we got. Dominic, so you're going to, first of all, these are cannolis that you're making. Right, these Tell are cannoli shells, and believe it or not, these are from Sicily. Nice. Wait till you taste them. I don't know, not too many people have this important cannoli shells. They're they delicious. look fluffier or something. They are fluffy, and they're made with the, with the doppio flour, doppio zeta flour, which I use over there. And they, they, the oil that they fry is amazing. It's so, wait till you taste it, it's so delicious. So I... I'm, I'm standing home uh, and I got some blood orange and I got some blood orange marmalade from Sicily. So I mix them together and it came out so good. I said, you know, I don't know why people don't do this all the time. 
you use you don't I don't use too much sugar because between the blood orange mar marmalade and the fresh blood orange which I'm going to chop in there and uh, it's going to be sweet enough that's right so this is in my start it's about a pound and a half and um, so with the sugar we're just going to go as we go along but it's, I got a blood orange here I'm going to just chop it fine I'm just going to chop another one here and it just to just peel it all around here and then I'm just going to chop it and just throw it in there because the the Imbastad is so nice and firm and that's what we use to make the cannoli cream and I'm not going to use no vanilla no nothing else just some chocolate chip and uh, and the blood orange I want to keep it really nice and simple and because I wanted to taste the blood orange with the, with the nice regard and the chocolate chip it's got such a nice, unique taste that you'll be surprised. That's kicking a cannoli up a notch. Oh my God! I don't think anybody <laughs> see it. Watch now, everybody. Well, you saw it here first. I'm, I now show it with the, with the blood orange. I just wanna. I wanna. Again, you don't want to put this in the quiz now because in the food process, because you don't want to emulsify. You just want some chunks in there, but you just want some juice on there also there we go. so when you taste it it just uh, I just can't explain it's better once you taste it so I'm going to throw that in there and this with the blood orange marmalade it's from Sicily and, and do you carry that mount marmalade here also yeah okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna put like two or three tablespoon of it and then we can always like add because you know some orange some more sweeter than other. So I'm gonna clean this up a little like I, as I said I didn't put no sugar in it yet. Okay, so now we're gonna put it in there, we go nice and slow with the embastada here. And, and like I said, you should get embastada if you're gonna make it because the regular regatta, like I said, I'm gonna go nice and slow when to incorporate it. Then I'm gonna see because I might put a couple more blood orange in there. Because I want a little more juice. What's the difference between a blood orange and a... It's red and it's more sweeter. Uh -huh. Or in Sicily, it's the, it's the known for the blood orange. When I go to Italy, I, I always eat a lot of it. See, see, now I want a little more juice in there. So I'm going to put another... Another added one more, one more black, one more orange because I want the juice out of in there too. So I'm just gonna put some juice. Look at that. Beauty. And then at the end, Salve. we just make the we put the we put the chocolate chip in there. There you go. I want a little consistency there. Now we're gonna taste it for for the sweetness. Mm. I think I'm gonna put a, just a, a little more depth of the marmalade. It's one that's just a little more sweeter. As you see, I didn't put no sugar, and this is this is a pound and a half, so I don't want to make a lot of cannoli. So we all could take home. Believe it or not, you know, you can make a, a cake with this. Really? Yeah, I want we'll to do that on the next show, Don. Yeah, I mean, you could make... You, you, like a ricotta cake? Well, a like ricotta cake, or you could do make a, like a... You just buy a pre-made orange cake, and you use this as a, a no. filling. Ah. For the, you know, for the inside. Hey, it tastes like a sweetness for that, yeah. I think it's okay, but just, uh, oh, that's nice. I don't want it too sweet. Now we're going to put some chocolate chip. And you, you can put as much as you want. I like a little, about a check. That's about a quarter of a cup. And I mix them nice and slow. Oh, that looks beautiful. Okay. 
And aside, and I could use a pastry bag, but I want to use a spoon to show you, you know, make it a family affair. I'm going to bring our guest host over. Okay, go ahead. Can we come have on, our guest sweetie. host? Yeah, come on, Allie. Come here, sweetie. Get a cooking lesson today. Okay, now at home, if you want to help mom, it's easy to stop. Once you stop this, always push it from here. And try to push it all the way in because you don't want to eat an empty canola. So you want to push it all in. And then you do this. And it's more fun than to use a pastry bag. This way you get the whole family vibe. Put it in. And then you stop it. There you go. And you got it. See, that looks nice. So we put them right here. And we're going to make about a dozen. I don't know, but these guys are going to eat a lot. Okay, we'll do it again. You see? Push it here. Push it on. Now you just push it in there, there with the other side of the spoon. So you want to make sure it goes at least halfway. You want to try one? Go ahead, take a spoon and try one. There you go. Don't worry about it. You make a mistake, you eat it, but you'll have fun. Uh, see? Then you could lick your fingers. It's okay, you're doing good. So, and the more you practice, the more you, you, uh, you get better at it. So in here for home, you just put it like this, then you stuff with the other side. And we're going to fill all these up, and then we're going to show up how it looks with my uh, little guest over here. Good. Go. Ready? In three, two, one. So Dom, they came out of the oven and yeah, as you could see, beautiful. they came out. We we cook them for 15 minutes, and then we uncover the last five minutes just to get them a little crispy on the top, and we just put it on a, you know some kale and just to show you, give you some idea, you know, if you want to serve as an appetizer, just the way they look, you know, they look good, just the way they look, just to make a presenter, but you'll enjoy them, and. Uh, over here, we finished the cannoli over here. We're just gonna put, with a little help from our friends, we're just gonna put some uh, powdered sugar on here. We put some little marmalade at the, at the end of each, sprinkle some leftover chocolate chip, and you could decorate this with some mint or other, some candy, some kiss candy, or whatever. You, and uh, here you go, enjoy it, you and your family. And, uh, for what we made today. So it was a good I can't wait to eat. We, we did some cannoli. First of all, we did uh, eggplant meatballs with some potatoes underneath the marinara sauce. A new ravioli, eggplant lentini. It's an appetizer, a little eggplant stuffed with eggplant and olives. A lot of cheese. Egg, uh, mushroom, I mean, uh, eggplant, onions, some feta cheese top, and we baked them. And last but not least, are the blood orange. Cannoli with there's no sugar in there. Was this a blood orange and some blood orange marmalade from Sicily? The cannoli shells from Italy, and uh, that brings we, us to a close. I think. Yeah, we Nothing. enjoy making it. I hope you try it. Give it a try, and thank you for watching. We appreciate it. And, uh, thank bless. you, everybody. Thanks, Allie. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good. Di quella birra, Lord.